and these numbers could then be shifted around to whoever needed labor. And the German military was paid for this labor. The Germans had thousands of numbered metal tags made specially and shipped out to the colony. This one is apparently unique in that the number was scratched and another number was put on because it seems like sometimes they reuse it. Looking at this pass and thinking that my aunt has to wear this thing like a dog around her neck, even my grandmother for that matter and every Herero person for that matter, it's, I don't know, I don't think there are words to express the pain. I don't have words. It's painful. The concentration camps were vast reservoirs of slave labor. As the colony's economy began to boom, the army began to rent Herero slaves to private business at a cost of 10 marks a month. But incredibly, some companies were so big that they were permitted to run their own concentration camps. In Swakopmund and in other cities as well, you would have the camp of the German military, and then you would have camps uh, which were run by private enterprise. Uh, one of these camps was the Vermin Company, which is one of the shipping companies. They had their own camp in which they kept people, in which they would use these people for labor. This shopping mall stands on what is believed to be the site of a concentration camp once owned and administered by the Vermin shipping line. Today, black Namibians walk from the township on the outskirts of Swakopmund to stack shelves on the site of the concentration camp where their grandparents' generation were worked to death. Deaths that were grimly and accurately recorded by the German authorities. There are at least 14 volumes in the Windhoek archives of death registers, Totenregister. And the death register lists the name of a person, which is usually unknown, the age of a person, the sex of a person, the number of the person, and for whom he or she is working at the time of death. And the cause of death, most of the time, is death through exhaustion. And there are pre-printed death certificates pre-printed death certificates with death through exhaustion, pre-printed on the death certificate. This was what was going on in Namibia, 1940-1909. Although there's no shortage of evidence for what happened in the camps, their memory has been wiped from Swakopmund's history. Opposite the probable site of the Vermin Line concentration camp, an antique shop sells memorabilia of the Second Reich to the tourists. Under the counter, they sell memorabilia of the Third Reich. About 2,000 Herero died in Swakopmund between 1904 and 1909. But there is no monument or plaque to mark the site of so much suffering. In fact, many in the town continue to deny the existence of the concentration camps. Each summer, the sun transforms Swakopmund into the jewel in modern Namibia's tourist industry. It's marketed as a little Germany under the African sun. The terrible past of this town is not allowed to intrude. But on the outskirts of Swakopmund, there is a bleak and graphic testimony to what happened here a century ago. Each of these mounds is the shallow grave of a victim of Swakopmund's concentration camps. But this graveyard has been denied and forgotten for a hundred years. Today this cemetery is the playground for tourists who ride dune buggies over the remains of the Herero dead. 
We know that there are mass graves along the Swakop River in Swakopmund. We know that there are mass graves in the shunting yards in Vintuk. And we know that in Luderitz, the people were simply thrown into the sea. But there is no monument to the people who died in the wars between 1904 and 1909. There is no monument to the first genocides of the 20th century. Slave labor from the concentration camps was used to build a new German Southwest Africa. Across the country, the years of the camps adorn the date plates of buildings and private homes. Even the present day parliament building was built by enslaved prisoners. But the biggest project carried out by slave laborers was the building of the colony's new railways. And the correspondence between the railway companies and the colonial authorities together with the huge number of photographs taken of the work, reveal how the forced labor of starving prisoners did not just construct the tracks, but helped to continue the genocide. The best documented of the railway projects was the building of a new line in the south. It was constructed by the Lenz Company, who between the beginning of 1906 and June 1907 were issued with 2,014 concentration camp prisoners. After just six months work, the Lenz Company reported to the colonial government that 1,359 of the prisoners had died, 67.48 percent. Men women and small children, children from the year of six years. They were used as slave laborers all over the country with a terrible death toll. For instance, on the Lüderitz aus railway line, you can see every sleeper, there is one dead body. The Lüderitz aus railway line was built to connect Lüderitz, the colony's second port, to the interior. Thanks to the war, this bleak and windswept harbour was for the first and last time in its history suddenly of strategic importance to the army. And while thousands were dying building the railways, Luderitz itself was also being rebuilt by slave labour. New houses and roads were completed and the town's docks were upgraded. And in achieving this transformation, Hundreds of prisoners from the town's concentration camp were worked to death. But there were two camps in Luderitz, and the second was different. It had been built on an island out in the harbour, Shark Island. This camp was away from public view, and access to it strictly forbidden. And what was happening here was not about slave labour, but about extermination. If I were to have to use the language of the Nazi period, then I would certainly see Shark Island as a death camp. It was an island onto which people were placed, and though some people were taken off the island for labor, the express purpose was to essentially eliminate them from the Namibian landscape. It was essentially a camp in which anybody placed on that island, everybody knew they were going to die. Most of the victims of Shark Island were not Herero. After witnessing the genocide against the Herero, the southern Nama people had also risen against the Germans. They were too late to help save the Herero, but just in time to become the newest victims of the genocide. It was specifically said in the German newspapers here that the Namas have no merit in the world anymore. They have no reason for living. They, they, are no, they are of no use to the world anymore. So I think that there was a very calculated attempt to, to eradicate the Nama on Shark Island. In September 1906, 1,732 Nama were sent to the camp after their surrender to the German army. Within seven months, 1,032 were dead. Of the survivors, 90% were too ill to work. They huddled together against the icy winds of the South Atlantic.